That is a confession that the transcript is inaccurate and has been tampered with in the sense that it's not an accurate recitation and reflection and there's nothing ordinary about it. Judicial Watch, our heavy lifting is getting some significant results, it's really historic results in the form of an admission by the Justice Department that the transcripts of the audio of the interviews that Joe Biden um, was subject to in the special counsel investigation of his mishandling of classified information and theft, the transcripts were messed with. They don't reflect accurately what was in the audio. Now, we all kind of guessed that was going to be the case because it explained why they were so desperate to hide this information from us. Why it is that Attorney General Garland is willing to go to jail in theory over this. He's, he could be found in contempt of Congress, assuming Congress gets his act together, at least the House does, for failing to um, obey a subpoena from the House to turn those audio tapes and other material over. And what happened is, uh, late Friday, it was 11 o'clock at night last Friday, the government filed a brief. It was a extraordinary brief, extraordinary not in a good way, extraordinary in a bad way, meaning they put forth a lot of new arguments that really had no basis in law as best we could see, to withhold these audio tapes from you, the American people. And included in these, this filing was a, a confession by, by a lawyer who did the right thing. You can, be, you can imagine they were very nervous about what they found. But you know there is sometimes ethics that still emerges now and again from the Justice Department. And the lawyer who admitted to this, you know, he tried to downplay it a little bit, but uh, the admission was going to be, they, they must have known it was going to be uh, pretty powerful in terms of its impact in the public discussion about this. Nixonian uh, the Nixonian um, messing around with tapes. I mean this is the file this is a simple FOIA this is a simple by the way, we're asking for one document, the audios. I think they got two tapes. Maybe it's four tapes, but they just have a few tapes. Because they had two recordings going. And they had two interviews, so maybe they're four tapes. Well, either way. And this is what they filed. This is what, 800 pages? Is that what you told me, Matt? 800 pages. I don't, I don't, after handling these documents, I don't need to go to the gym today. And in the documents, they say, I've never seen anything like this in the context of FOIA. We can't have them, because, the, the audios, because executive privilege. Executive privilege doesn't apply in this context to withholding documents. Executive privilege typically is for advice sought by and received by the President of the United States. Not an interview of something that's First of all, the transcript is public as they are want to remind us every three minutes. An interview of a president in a criminal investigation. He wasn't seeking advice. When her questioned him. Now to go back, the reason they won't, don't want this audio released, it's clear, is because it shows that Joe Biden has significant cognitive challenges and that her was fair in saying that it shows that you know he has no memory based on these audios and his interaction with them. And that's a political negative for him. I mean, I don't know why he thinks it's as, <laughs> I mean, have you seen videos of him walking around and his reaction to questions and just being out of it. There's a Wall Street Journal piece today, devastating analysis of his, 
his behind the scenes behavior, which mimics his, it, I think I tweeted the first line of it up. I don't know, do we still have that, Sean? Yeah, behind closed doors, Biden shows signs of slipping. So here's the first line. Let's go to the first line. This is in the Wall Street Journal. When President Biden met with congressional leaders in the West Wing in January to negotiate a Ukraine funding deal, he spoke so softly at times that some participants struggled to hear him, according to five people familiar with the meeting. He read from notes to make obvious points, paused for extended periods, and sometimes closed his eyes for so long that some in the room wondered whether he had tuned out. So they're describing not me running these weekly updates, it's the President of the United States in meetings with senior levels of government, senior, senior leaders of government. Now, uh, the story goes on and on in that regard. Time Magazine had similar language in their big interview with President Biden as well. Uh, and I guess the audio is just going to further confirm all of this, right? So that's why they're coming up with all these scam arguments to withhold this information from us under FOIA. But Judicial Watch filed the first lawsuit on this. Heritage followed up with the lawsuit a month later. And CNN and, and I think 12 or 13 other media companies are now um, with us in this lawsuit as well. But we broke open this case and forced them uh, to, come, to come back with extraordinary uh, political and lawless arguments to justify the, something that's indefensible, which is the withholding of this audio. So executive privilege doesn't apply. They say privacy applies. It doesn't apply. The president doesn't, he's not a private figure. The transcript's out. He's one of the most public figures in the history of the world. What privacy interest does he have in this? And isn't the public interest in knowing why Her did what he did? By the way, Her gave him a get out of jail free card based on this analysis that his memory was false. And they're denying his memory was false, the Biden White House. So we want to know what the truth is. And the audio Her relied upon in order to hide this from us. And the kicker is, they were telling us the transcript's good enough. It's an accurate recitation of what went on. And in the course of this brief, there is an extraordinary admission by a senior lawyer in the Justice Department. I have to get the whole thing. I mean, he's not just a senior lawyer, he's like the senior lawyer in the Justice Department. Let me go to the... So when they do, when, so in FOIA cases, oftentimes they'll have a, a, an official kind of go under oath to explain the basis or bolster the basis for withholding a particular document. I mean, never has so much ink been spilled to hide just one document. Really, I'm mean, exaggerating, but I think it's really true. So Bradley Weisenheimer, it's not Weisenheimer, excuse me. It's Weinsheimer. He's Associate Deputy Attorney General for the Department of Justice. He serves as the highest ranking career official in the department. So he is the most senior lawyer in the apartment in the, the Justice Department in terms of the career civil service. So their political appointees, obviously, he uh, reports to, but he's the top of the top in terms of the career civil service in the Justice Department. And he makes this confession, and I'm sure it pained him to do so. On page thirteen and fourteen, excuse me, not thirteen paragraphs. 13 and 14. 
After the interview, special counsel's office, these are the interviews with uh, Biden, created written transcripts of the audio recording with the assistance of a trained professional court reporter. One transcript for each day of the interview. I have read the entirety of the written transcripts of the interview. As I listened to the audio recording, I compared it to the transcripts of the audio recording and specifically listened, listened for differences between the transcripts and the audio recording. In a few instances, the transcripts indicate that some words from the audio recording are indiscernible. In listening to the audio recording and reviewing the transcripts, I agree that in those instances the words are indiscernible. So the words are indiscernible, no one can hear what they are. And that sometimes happens in audio. The interview transcripts are accurate transcriptions of the words of the interview contained in the audio recording, except for minor instances such as the use of filler words, such as um or ah, when speaking that are not always reflected on the transcripts, or when words may have been repeated when spoken, such as I, I, and, and, but sometimes was only listed a single time in the transcripts. Besides these exceedingly minor differences, based on my simultaneous review of the transcripts while listening to the audio recording, the transcripts accurately captured the words uh, spoken during the interview on the audio recording with no material differences between the audio recording and transcripts. Well, that I don't believe. None of the minor differences included any audible substantive changes. That is based on my review. There is no material omission. Material there, that's a big word in the legal sense, doing a lot of work there. Material omission of words between the audio recording and transcripts. Special counsel Her and FBI personnel who attended the interview and compared the audio recording to the transcripts also informed me of their determination that the transcripts accurately reflect the words spoken on the audio recording aside from the minor instances I described above. Uh, Special Counsel Herr emphasized to me that it was important for purposes of his investigation that the interview inter transcripts be accurate. Now that's, that is a confession that the transcript is inaccurate and has been tampered with in the sense that it's not an accurate recitation and reflection and there's nothing ordinary about it. I responded over the weekend, I had to do a quick response because of the breaking news. Here's what I said initially. Breaking news, uh, the Biden administration just admitted they messed with the transcript of Joe Biden's audio interviews with the special counsel, Robert Herr. You may recall, he doesn't want to turn the audios over. He's citing executive privilege. He's uh, citing personal privacy as well. And Judicial Watch has sued for these records, uh, the audios in federal court, and they just filed a brief last night, 11 p.m. on a Friday, saying the audio transcripts are not accurate. They d deleted words like um, uh, or what he double spoke, like an, and, or I, I, kind of like a stutter. All of that obviously helps him uh, politically and for his campaign. And it's not ordinary, it's not normal, Legal transcripts, interview transcripts, deposition transcripts are not supposed to be altered in this fashion. And it's a real scandal. It's a Nixonian scandal. Don't you agree? So in addition to kind of fighting for the release of these records in the FOIA case that Judicial Watch is pursuing that forced this admission to what everyone suspected, that they were messing with the transcript to protect Joe, we just filed a new FOIA request to investigate that Nixonian tampering with evidence. And this is what I said in the press release. Wow, Judicial Watch's FOIA lawsuit forced the Biden team to admit what everyone suspected, that the transcripts, uh, the transcript is not accurate, was changed in a way to help Biden. There's nothing ordinary about this, and the transcript inaccuracy issues seem to help Biden's political campaign needs. We today initiated a new FOIA request on the Biden's Nixonian, on, on this Biden's Nixonian tape scandal. So we've got the FOIA lawsuit. Now we have a new FOIA request to figure out what the heck went on in terms of the cover up in the new FOIA law, in the FOIA lawsuit we just filed, or we've been pursuing. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and like our video down below.